Hi, welcome back to my blog, Edis English Literature. I am Ordhan Dude. Today, we are going to read John Masfield's beautiful poem, The Sea Fever. John Masfield is a notable British writer, a poet laureate, and a novelist. His writing skills is simple with the voice of enjoying the life, very close to Carpe Diem theme, and his is the wish of celebrating the life in its fullest core, as the nature as well as the world is appreciating our existence. So we should enjoy the beauty of the nature, or rather be cheerful all the time. Life is a sweet tale of music, it can be celebrated with mirth, with enjoyment. So there is no finding of sorrows in his book of writing. His notable novel, The Midnight Fog and The Box of Delights, are saying the simple way of enjoying the life without making any fuss, without making any complaint to our shortcomings, or see the life, see the nature as it is, and make the merry out of it, make the mirth out of it. So you'll we'll find a kind of celebration, a kind of celebration of life, a kind of celebration of beauty, a kind of celebration of nature. And there is not a single page which tells the sorrow tales of our life, sorrowful aspects of our life. So his is the teaching or his is the philosophy of enjoyment and enjoyment to the heart enjoyment to the core or the bosom of our realizations and it is the very philosophy of our understanding of this world that makes this world beautiful. In this poem, the sea fever will find a beautiful celebration of that notion. Sea fever is a popular poem by John Masfield. It tells a simple tale of our life, our wishes, our desires for unknown, unseen, and the application or the wishes of seeing the beyond. Friction of seas are nothing new in English poetry. In the poem of Ulysses by Tennyson, you will find how Odysseus is running after those. In Tennyson's Ulysses, you will find a kind of robust appeal to seeing the unseen, to knowing the unknown. And Odysseus, despite of his old age, instructs his son Telemachus to look after his Ithaca. And he is running after, or he will set forth a long journey. Such is the appeal of the sea, is that John Mansfield here, looking after to see that unseen, to know that unknown. In the vast opacity of sea, he will find a new look. So here, the robust optimism is here. And obviously, sea voyage is the very attraction of seeing the unknown or seeing the unseen. In this three stanza poem, we will find very simple rhyming pairs. Each of the stanza consisting of four lines and each of the four lines is rhyming A, B, A, B and that like. So it's musical, it's lyrical, it's rhythmic, it's full of optimistic poem. So let's start reading this poem. I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea and the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a start to steer her by. So here the poet wishes to navigate the sea once again. He don't want to be gathered by so many of the peoples, so many of the gatherings. 
his own will is sufficient enough to start a voyage and the lonely sea and the sky is the most attractive thing for him the vast lonely sea and the vastness of the sky and its loneliness appeals the poet but the poet asks one requirement and that is a tall ship for a long journey a larger ship for a long journey equipped to that machinery which by which he can carry out a long ship a perpetual sea journey and a start to steer her by like that of ulysses he also needs a pole star following a pole star is marking one's location so a pole star in the northern sky shows the way to the navigator in which direction he is moving forward so following a pole star means making a direction or following a direction which is a constant one because the position of the pole star is stayed fast unchanging so the poet's wishes and his urges to see the unseen to know the unknown is like that of a tit fast straight forward confirm and yielding one and the wheels kick the wind song and the white sail shaking and the gray mist on the sea's face and the gray dawn breaking so the poet sees in front of him the scene of the voyage there should be wheels kicking and there will be song in the natural music of wind and the white the white sail of the ship will be shaking by the gust of wind and he floating on the sea to the unknown unseen as like that of following the pole star like that of odysseus a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking so here the gray is the color of unseen as well as full of opacity so the poet's wishes is to navigate through that unknown that unseen so gray mist sign of mystery but poet wishes to navigate through that mystery to discover new land to reach unknown to reach unseen in the second stanza it says i must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied it is us it is our heart that makes a call the desires of us make an instant call for journey and the poet is hearing that call from his heart and he sees the appeal of seas the running tide is calling him and it is a call that cannot be denied it is a call that has a wild appeal and the call he hears clearly and that call can never be denied so it is the urge to see the unknown to navigate through the unseen is the prime factor and john is here setting forth his new journey new voyage because he appeals him and it is not for the first time but the word again it refers that seas are an instant appeal to him for several of the times several of the occasions and all i ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying the poet wishes that there should be wind so that his ship can remain afloat the white clouds should be flying over it that's a very pen pictorial quality of description of the sea and the flung spray and the blown film and the seagulls crying all should be crying the foam that is blown by wind would be there 
and the spray of water should be there. Hostile the atmosphere with cast of winds at that scene of the sea when he will be at sea. All these scenarios he get in his mind intact and he dreams about that scene to be enacted once again. So he wishes to set forth his journey once again. I must go down to the seas again. Look at the very fast lines repeated thrice. And the words I must go down to the seas again is the very word that sets forth poet's urgency. Many of us think several times before hesitate, oscillates, vacillates many a times before starting a journey, before trying a new adventure. But the call comes from within and the urgency and the instant appeal of the poet is that he must go down to the seas again, to the background keeps life. I like that of Ulysses. He says, looking after those gods, looking after those old wives, are none of the business of Ulysses. He says his son Telemachus, he should take care of these household things. I must set forth. I must start a journey. And that journey is through the appeal of the nature through the emblem of nature, through the symbolic way of taking the flight with. So his is the journey, I like that of the gull's way. The seagull, when it floats in its free will, in its full freedom, should be the voice of John, should be the flight of John. He liked to say or think like that. He liked to take a flight like that. The whale's way, the description of the sea is here that appeals John Mansfield so many times. The description of the nature, the seagull's flight, as well as the whales are running after or rather going parallel with the ship. And the winds like a which night, when wind is cutting like that of a serpent knife, that cutting wind he needs because it takes his ship afloat and lead him beyond the reach of worldly affairs or lead him into the world of nature unknown, unseen. In the concluding two lines, it says, And all I ask is a merry yearn from a laughing rover fellow. I need some mariner friends. All of the friends will be mine, the same sailors. And during that journey, there should be no trail of earthly appearance. Rather, our tale should be the tales of great selling experiences and it should be told by fellow sellers with their experiences. And in the midnight and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick so over. The trick here refers to the journey. When the long journey would be over, I should take a rest, I should take a sleep. And that sleep should be soothing one appreciating one because I have gone through the toils or hardship or, or I have taken a journey that attracts me, that leads me on. So after that kind of journey through the sea, through the nature, I will take a complete placidity in my mind. I will be in full sleep. That sleep should be soothing one appealing one, appreciating one. We have just completed reading this particular poem which states about 
our wishes of navigating through nature. Here John Masfield is referring to the sea journey, sea voyage. In fact, it can be related to any kind of sightseeing, any kind of natural enjoyment. If you have any difficulty in understanding this poem, you can just pop up any question here. I will try to answer you. So, thank you. Like, share and comment and stay tuned. Bye-bye.